getting some of my primitive tools ready for an epic survival challenge. Courtney's going to be joining me. This thing's going to be awesome. But I want to thank my sponsor, Magic Spoon. This is the trip down memory lane. This is cereal reinvented. We got a variety pack coming four flavors. We got fruity, we got cocoa, we got frosted, and we got my favorite peanut butter. A bowl of Magic Spoon's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving for a total of 140 calories per bowl. They're also keto friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Like me, you've developed allergies or you've developed intolerances, and this is a bonus to me because it's really hard to find cereal for grown-ups. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, they're offering 100% happiness guaranteed. So if you don't like the product for any reason, just ask for your money back. If you guys wanna try the cereal, use the code WOODEDBEARD and apply that into the link I'll provide down in the pinned comment as well as in the description. Big thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. I gotta gather all my stone tools and my wife and head off into the wilderness to see if we can't survive. All right, welcome guys to another adventure. I got City Courtney with me again today. Here I am. And the mosquitoes infested swamp as always knows how to show a girl a good time that's right so we got to get through this uh wall of grass over here and find a decent place to survive mm. today we have no no modern tools anyway and but little primitive tools we have are probably not going to be sufficient but this is your this you guys came up with this idea you said why don't you do a no no tool survival challenge i'm like okay mm. so we got a really good forecast for today it's supposed to watch that's a uh, stinging nettle oh God. so if you brush your hand up against it like don't like that, it. No, it really hurts. What are you doing? Stings like bee stings. Oh my god. I don't know why I did that, but. <laughs> You're so dumb. <sighs> We're just getting wetter and wetter. <laughs> and it's actually supposed to rain today. It's supposed to get worse. Not that this wet grass isn't bad enough. Look at that. Walking through the grass. Look at it. Soaked my pants already. Maybe we can build like a grass type shelter. That'd be something. There's actually a little bit of an animal track, animal trail through here because it's made a wall. Ooh, stirring up all the mosquitoes now. <laughs> but that could be one wall of a structure. I'm thinking, and I don't really want to walk around anymore because getting walking around is kind of a bad deal. It's a raw deal today. I'm getting mm. bit by mosquitoes all over the place. This sounds like fun. I'm glad I came. <laughs> no. I brought you a pair of gloves. More gloves. It's a tradition now. <laughs> there you go. Some new, brand new work gloves. Wow. These are These are leather. Those are like Cow even hide. prettier than the last ones. How high leather. My goodness, you spoil me. If I'm spoiling you or just keep you work faster? <laughs> the more work you do, the less work I have mm, to do. Okay, well, those are the things you keep to yourself and just <laughs> say, yes, I spoil you, I treat you well. <clears throat> My allergies. <clears throat> so there you go. Very high humidity today. It's probably the worst day we could have picked it. Probably, right? Probably, but we didn't pick it. Uh, we just got lost in the woods it, here. It picked us. We got to go with it. There's no other choice. <laughs> So we need to get some branches going to start with here. Okay. And maybe maybe if we clear out the site a little bit with a stick, can actually make it so that we don't get so wet. Maybe that'd be the first order. Because the more we walk through all this, the, the wetter we get. And then we're setting ourselves up for a very uncomfortable night's sleep. Let's get to work. Deep breaths. Yep, deep breaths. We got our basic footprint kind of set out. It's all smashed down here. It's as dry as you can be for being in the low-lying spot. Again, with survival, you should always go up. But this time we're simulating kind of being stuck in a really horrible environment. Mm. Simulating. <laughs> but we're really lost though. Yep, really lost. Feel? And um, this doesn't feel like simulation. I'm pretty wet. Thinking outside the box is what I'm good at. Are you? As far as wilderness survival, yeah. That's why you always ask me when you're unsure of things. <laughs> I'm like your go-to. Is this the behind the camera scene kind of thing where I just like, Courtney, I don't know, I'm really unsure about this mm. thing. I think really I'm sure about something and then you second guess me. <laughs> is it more like in tune with um, our, I our think overall relationship? Like we'll, our theme is like, well, I have this really great idea and you're like, well, have you thought about it? And I'm like, yes. And you're like, have you thought about it? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, have, and then you you just keep kind of going on and you have lots of doubts yep. about me. And even Even though this is my field of expertise, but I'm I'm still there for you to just, you know, call things in and 
<laughs> make sure you're doing things right. <laughs> no, she's dreaming. <laughs> Why is your tongue going all funny up inside your mouth there? I think that's an indicator of deception. Hmm. Fascinating. I don't think you're fooling anybody. <laughs> You're on my side, right guys? <laughs> yeah, but for all the wrong reasons. Uh, Am I right? I found some food. Go ahead. Okay. Raspberries? Yes. <laughs> would you, would, if I told you they were edible, would you believe me? See? You're the expert. Point proven. Did you see the, the big... That's the sigh I always get. It's, um, it's the sigh of love. <laughs> I think it's a wild strawberry. How? That doesn't look anything like a strawberry. I know it looks like a wild raspberry, but raspberries don't usually grow that low to the soil. But it could be such the case that, that they just haven't grown up such that they're vine up. But um, oh, I'm going to eat them. You just eat all the leaves. Yeah, so it's all edible. Yeah. It tastes exactly like a raspberry. I think it's a stunted raspberry. Anyway, if you guys are doing your research uh, on wild edible berries, they're very difficult to kind of mess up. So any of the strawberries, you see any of the berries that have bunches, yeah. like you know uh, mulberry has a bunch. Yep. Watch out for the solid ones, avoid the solid ones, but if it's lobed, I think that's the word for it, what is it, lobed berry, yep. and it has many different segments, it's, it's usually an edible one and it would warrant more research. And we're actually finding a lot of them in the forest here. And it's just the right time for it to be like raspberry, strawberry. Well, you ate it, so you believe what I'm saying. Yes. So we got water so far and we got food. I make shelter. That's, <laughs> that's pretty meager food. That food was amazing. But, you know, you keep your eyes open and, yep. and uh, you're bound to find some other things. So I'm going to go with a raspberry. I don't know, maybe it's a hybrid. Since we don't have any tools, this is what we're left doing. It's pulling out anything that's dead or rotten. So we can break off. Whatever we can break off, we can use, essentially. These sears are going to do a good job. There's another one over here. And then we can bust them off. If we had a saw, this would make short work of this, but here we are. No tools. No modern tools, anyway. This is super fun. It's arriving. Just saying. Could be worse. Yeah, it could be. Could, could be, be not. Could be raining. Could be not surviving. Okay, <laughs> very true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 15, 20 minutes. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Losing track of time. But uh, we got a good length of sticks. I don't know if we have enough yet, but it's better to collect too few than too many because we're obviously conserving our calories here. We don't want to go too hungry. We're only surviving on raspberries, which my wife reminded me look nothing like a strawberry. Did you see my strawberries in the garden? They're nothing like that. They're just nothing like that. They're just nothing. The leaves are completely different. <laughs> we're gonna debranch all these, which is gonna be a little bit of a chore. We gotta break them all off and we're gonna make them all about the same length so we can prop them up. Are you still grimacing about the comments earlier? <laughs> yeah, kind of am. <laughs> you know, if nothing else, this challenges you, maybe socially more than physically. <laughs> wow. Emotionally, for sure. <laughs> Leave positive comments. Oh my goodness. Because if Courtney can put up with me, I figure, then she can put up with the survival because that's only half the battle. Those people on alone have it easy. <laughs> well, because well, they're by themselves. That's a different, totally different battle. Like you'd have a lot more problems probably by yourself. Okay, well, that's true. As much grief I, as I give you, <laughs> if you're on your own. Yes, I, I could not go. Probably like a myself. half a day. You'd be like, I'm out. Where's my book? <laughs> <laughs> like what you'd have to write your own book oh my goodness on know. stone tablets <laughs> we're obviously putting off doing more work here we're breaking these branches off is no fun so i'm going to introduce primitive tool the no tool survival challenge no modern tool survival challenge this is primitive tool number one it's beautiful it's so well made like everything jay does um i'm just not strong enough to use it <laughs> so you need a little bit of strength behind it um but it's so cool this was made to made by Jay Valenti, a good friend of mine. He makes all kinds of primitive tools. And he wanted to challenge himself to make a primitive axe. So he's got, it's not sharp, because he wanted to make it out of stone. And it's uh, got sinewed into a good handled sized piece of wood. And so Courtney says it's impossible, she can't do it. It does work if you want to cut a live tree down. If you hit around the base of the live tree, 
it'll score it and then you can actually break it off the rest and then you can destroy the rest of the fibers with this. As far as it being super sharp, it is not that. But it can work, say if you're in a battle with somebody and you want to uh, give them a good concussion or worse, break their eye socket. This is a really good weapon for that kind of thing and obviously it works really well as a fish bonker both this way and the other way. So how this works is blunt force trauma. You just basically, you're just whacking stuff. But it's not a finesse tool, it's a basher. <laughs> Perfect length. How many did you get for my one? <laughs> home sweet home. <laughs> Are you gonna fit? Oh yeah. It'll be cozy in there. A little damp. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> what? Is it a spider or a oh, mosquito? A caterpillar. A caterpillar. <laughs> scary. <laughs> I think the mosquitoes are more scary. So we've pushed the tops end in here and that's gonna stop it from falling down. And uh, we made it just tall enough so that we can fit two people squeezed tightly in there. That's it. Doesn't need to be any bigger than necessary. It's not gonna protect us from anything. And the next thing we need to do is fill the frame in with something that will repel all the rain that we're expected to come today. Some people might wanna come on a trip like this. Um, until they got here. <laughs> okay, then. The idea is lovely. Yeah? Yep. Is it better to watch it on camera? Yep. Than to live through it? So this is real survival, then? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a Hardcore. joke. It is hard. So here we found another example of that berry we've been eating today. And you can see how it's starting to vine up a little bit here. So I would say that's a pretty good indication that we have raspberries. Wouldn't you say it's a it, raspberry yeah, now? it looks like a raspberry. Now it's a raspberry. So you got deceived because you thought a raspberry was a very tall plant. When in fact a raspberry in the woods without very much sunlight is a very small plant. Makes sense. So your confidence is up now again. Right? Like, oh, I know what a raspberry looks like. It's a tall, viney plant. And then when I see a bunch of them together and they're like, they look like that, then it's a raspberry. But when you see it down low, you're like, ah, that doesn't fit my search engine. But I'm like, nah, you know what? I know something else on top of the fact that raspberries can be low and it's that lobed berries are edible. Tur what are those turf shelters? So sod houses. Sod houses. Sod houses, yeah. that's what it is. That's not grass though. Well, it's close enough. It's grass and dirt. We're, we, don't have the, we don't have any metal implements today mm -hmm. to be digging anything out like a sod house. Um, but uh, yeah, historically people would have been sent to Canada to make sod houses. Right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the things they would have done, but they wouldn't have been out in the plains. And that's kind of, you know, you build out of what you have. So here we have a lot of grass. We're going to build the grass. Now, a question for you. Um, do you know what a stinging nettle looks like? Um, is it that? Yeah, that's it right okay. there. Okay. So the stinging nettle plant, uh, which is right here, it's a kind of a broad, broad leaf plant. And if you look closely, it's got a bunch of um, nettles on there, which are very wispy like things. They're not very, they're not pokey. They're not like Texas where they want to kill you. They just want to stick stick in you a little bit of formic acid like an ant just a little bit so and it, it wears off in about 15 20 minutes or something like that it's not the end of the world some people might be allergic to again you know sample these things sparingly don't sample, don't sample them but if you happen to brush up against it you know what it is anyway so what we don't want to do is put that in our shelter <laughs> definitely not we can put it in the roof it's probably fine touch those things well you've got gloves on you'll be okay it's, mm. it's not that po it's not poisonous it's just not pleasant advice oh huh? Asking advice. Are you going to ask me some advice about how to pull grass? I'll take it. Okay. Um, am I trying to get like as close to the root as possible or yeah. just pulling and it, whatever well, I get? Well, see, if you just pull the top off, you're only going to get a little bit of grass. You want to get, you know, if you're going to pull a piece of grass out, you might as well pull a lot yeah, of it out. Right? I got the root. So, okay. and then the more grass you get at the same time, the more efficient you are, but also the harder it is going to be to break the grass. Yes. Yeah, I definitely can't pull too many at once. I'm not strong enough. Sorry. So one thing I've noticed real real quick about pulling grass is obviously if you grab the top you're gonna to break the top but if you take it you go around your hand and then you wrap it once and then you grab with the other hand down low 
and pull with your legs, you can actually get pretty good leverage on it. And then you can actually grab bigger pieces. Usually two poles will get you out. And then you're using more of your legs than your arms. I'm getting tired maybe. <laughs> I'm just getting more of the more of the roof. Huh. Watch the nettles here. Am I in the nettles? Yep. Is that what got me in the face? Mm -hmm. Ow. Yeah, let's go over here. <laughs> Already get worn out. Oh, well, let's go take a load back and see where we're at. Now we're gonna pile this on. No rhyme or reason. It's gonna be a modified sod house. Oh, my face is killing me with those nettles. Wow, well, that worked better than I thought. Check that out. That's a pretty good dent. I'd say that's probably a fifth of what we need to be comfortable. We do want to stack it up high because it's basically going to be a situation where it's a volume thing. The bigger the volume of stuff we have and the longer it's going to take for, to saturate. And I did purposely lay the first rung this way because I don't want them to all fall in. The next rungs will run down this way. This is primitive tool number two, I guess we're at. So this is a actual stone knife made also by Jay Valenti, good buddy. You guys go check him out. I'm gonna link them down below. You can actually buy these knives and they're not expensive either. I think he's charges like 50 to $100 for this stuff. And then trust me, these are worth a lot more than that. And he likes to make them so they're functional so you can actually use them in the field. I feel bad using them in the field and I'm sure people that buy them probably feel bad using them in the field, but he wants to see them being used. That being said, they are very beautiful pieces and uh, you know what, you want to put this on a mantle, I'd say it fits in really nicely. Anyway, so this is a, um, it's, it's sharp. And so what we could do is actually use this to cut the grass in the same way that we've been using our hands, <laughs> except with a lot less work. So again, this is more of a shredder because it's not really made for this. This stuff, this stuff cuts, cuts meat very, very easily. And so we're just gonna grab and then we can shred and you can see how how quickly that works that was a lot less effort than reefing on them and this is probably a tool that even uh, Courtney could use you see how easy low effort again man was a great inventor of tools for this reason and we could be more productive have more children conquer new areas look at all this fun <laughs> I don't know if it was worth all the work but it was kind of fun but there's still a lot it's a lot of work I'm sweating inside my gloves Looks good. Uh, so a good indication of whether or not this is going to be rainproof is if you look up and you can't see the sun. Since there's no sun today, we're going to call that a success. We got a little couple little pokey bits, but you can see there's enough room for me to squat in here. So there'll definitely be enough room for both of us to lay down in here. And it's not supposed to be spacious. It's supposed to be just enough because the bigger you make it, the more energy you use. There we go. Tight squeeze. Creeks are, are a thorough, thorough way. Thorough, is that the word? Yep. Thorough way. For raccoons and all, all kinds of semi-aquatic animals too. They'll run up and down the creek and they'll look for all kinds of things. Often they'll find like small things like frogs, tadpoles, things like that. Do you want to eat a frog? Not today. 
<laughs> what do you mean not today? You're gonna eat when I get you. Okay, well. I it's, like, no, it's, not. Like, it's not a menu. Well, it is a menu, but you don't just like, oh, I would like to have uh, not a frog. I would not like to have a tadpole. I would like to have a delicious trout. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, beggars like he knows me. can't be choosers is what I'm getting at. You'll get what I you get. It. You'll get. I, I'll get what I get, but okay. like, I might just not eat. You could always do that. <laughs> you don't care if you lose the survival challenge, in other words. Right. You know what I didn't think about is those cattails would probably be in the right condition to eat. So we can actually pull up some of those stalks as well. I didn't even think of that. There's a stalk right here, but it's kind of mangled, trampled on and full of swamp water, but that's good. It's a little woody. It's like celery right now. Mm. I would eat it if it wasn't full. I don't like celery. Full. <laughs> Again, it's not a menu. So what I was saying is the creek can be a major source of food. That's why animals concentrate around this. We've got a creek here. I've got trail, all kinds of trail camera images of raccoons walking up and down. And what they look for is like dead things usually because they're not very ambitious. Oh, what they look for. <laughs> not what we look for. Well, we might look for a dead thing too. Mm. If we get desperate. No, we're not desperate yet? I'm not desperate yet. Not yet. <laughs> so uh, there could be clams in here. Uh, had those. We had those before. Mm. Um, there could be minnows. There could be uh, crawfish or crayfish. Those are actually good. They're not too bad. We brought those home once. Uh, I know there's some bullfrogs in here, but obviously we're not going to hear them right okay, now. They're mostly I'm, nocturnal. Bullfrogs are good. They're going to move back to the top because now my other options are apparent and that sounds, other than the trout, the frog sounds better than everything else you Well, said. I'll see if I can find you a delicious trout. <laughs> so um, since we have no modern tools, I'm not going to sit there and whittle a bunch of fishing line and make some gorge hooks and all that. That might take weeks. Right. It'd take me weeks anyway. Okay, so I'm not a primitive tools kind of expert. Maybe that's more of a job for ladies where you sit down and like use some of those um, stinging nettles and you dry them and weave them and you're like, here you go, husband. I made you some lines so you can get some food for me. And I'd be like, yeah, cool, I'll go. Because you don't want to do the, the tedious fishing, right? Right. Anyway, the point is we're not going to be doing that. But Thank that's a task, goodness, like eh? if you, you got comment down below, Courtney should make primitive fishing line for you to fish for, because she wants to do that, she just needs lots of encouragement. Whew, okay, so point is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some noodling, some, there's no catfish in here. I'm gonna do some trout tickling. It's called <laughs> trout tickling, tickling. When, you, when you tickle for them. It sounds like fun. Because uh, it? it's, not like a, it's not like fish noodling where you like stick your hand in there and you turn your fish, your hand into a noodle, yeah, and then the, the catfish grabs on to it. Watching a lot of Hannah, Hannah, Hannah Barron, you guys check out that channel. But we're not, we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna do truck tickling. It's more delicate. And what you're gonna do is kind of mimic the actions of like undercurrent, like lee, like seaweeds and things. And trouts like seaweeds. They don't mind brushing up against them. So we're gonna kind of imitate that okay. thing. Okay. You wanna try it? Well, are you I gonna don't know. take that it, back? When you said tickling sounds like fun, but the whole description just lost it for me. Well, you can tickle my trout anytime you want. Mm. <laughs> My reaction. Hmm. Are you blushing? <laughs> shades of shades of pink. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Okay. So time to trout tickle. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> tickle your trout. I don't have a trout. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the trick is we know the fish is gonna be facing up up the bank. We know it's gonna be facing this way, so that'll give a kind of give us an idea of how we wanna grip our hands. And we gotta make sure that if we do touch a fish, it doesn't chew off this way. Now, there is a little bit of a riffle here. The chances are the fish are gonna be concentrated up near the top here. And of course, we know they're gonna be under the bank because there's more safety. You'd be surprised how far up in the bank you can actually reach uh, before you touch bottom because obviously the water's flowing and it's scouring out and there's a bend here. So it's gonna scour down nice and deep all the way through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in and uh, just very carefully, I wanna feel like, I know what a fish feels like. You guys know what a fish feels like. So we're just gonna get our hands up as far as we can up into the bank. You see how far I can go? I can actually get my whole arm in there. Now I'm wet. <laughs> it's okay, it's for food. We're gonna get our calories back. Okay, I gotta reach up all the way up underneath. And you never know what size fish are gonna be in here. They could be a little small fish, they could be giant fish. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way up. I don't feel anything there. I'm gonna go up a little bit more. And what's gonna happen is if the fish are scared, they're gonna keep going up uphill here. Ooh. 
I gotta watch out for snapping turtles and all sorts of other critters that could be in there. Ow! No, just kidding. <laughs> Courtney flinched. I actually felt like I felt like I, there was something there. But it was just this felt like maybe a little kick, like maybe a maybe a crayfish or something. Something moved this way. It came back over on this side and I actually saw a little glimmer here. I can't reach, I gotta watch the bank here. I can't reach too far over. There it went, it went up here. And then it darted back down under here again. Okay. There it is, I feel something there now. Way up under the bank. Okay, now I gotta get my hands positioned. Two hands. I think I got one. He's way under the bank. There he is. I got him. Oh, I gotta hold on tight. Oh. There we go. Check it out, guys. <laughs> it got, got a rainbow. Oh. Rainbow right out of the creek. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. Well, I got you a delicious trout. You don't need to eat frog legs or tadpoles or what other options you have, minnows. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go clean this fish. It looks like we got some rain coming in. So why don't you head back, Courtney, and uh, work on the shelter. And then I'll meet you back and we'll hopefully be able to get a fire started. What do you think? Sounds good. All right, see ya. Well, I have some pretty cool things I wanna show you. These are break off pieces. While he's making them, a lot of these stones actually are discarded as waste because what you're trying to do is make a fine point for an arrowhead or a knife. So he doesn't just let these lay around. He actually picks them up because if somebody steps on them, they could cut them. They're very sharp. And historical records and archeological experiments have shown that these stone points were actually used, the chip-offs were actually used in order to process game. And that's because it would save your nice knife they do get dull with time and use. And so by using the discarded pieces on say cleaning a fish or skinning a deer or other large game, you could actually preserve the length of your other blade. And incidentally, these shards are actually sharper than the actual knives or as sharp, I should say. And so right out of the gate, you're starting off with an advantage. And only by doing these experiments in real time, such as on a fish, or other big game can we see just how effective these tools really are. it cut through that fish like it was butter. I didn't have to force it as long as it didn't go through any of the bones of the fish. Now, forcing through the bones of any animal is not good with any kind of blade. And obviously our modern tools are a lot more tolerant to that sort of thing and sharpen easier. But it is possible to sharpen our stone tools as well by breaking off more pieces. It just, as you do that, same as a modern knife, it gets smaller and smaller. Only with a stone tool, that happens a lot faster. All right, now that we've got our food, Let's make our way back to camp. Let's see how Courtney's making out with the shelter and find out if we can actually stay dry. Hopefully it'll stop raining because if we have to last the night in the shelter that we produced, it's gonna be a long one. Thankfully, it's warm enough that it's not such a big deal, but still not super nice to walk in. Courtney, where are you? At home, dear. <laughs> you hiding out in there? Yep. Well, I, I think the rain stopped. I thought it was gonna get bad there, but it stopped. <laughs> you comfy in there? Um, well, dry-ish, dry. so that's good. <laughs> Did Actually, it? I was pretty dry. Pretty dry? Yeah, just, um, <laughs> huh. 
Yeah, oh, actually, geez. I was much drier than I would have been out here. So it's getting pretty gnarly. I uh, I hung out under the tree a little bit, <laughs> and I drank some water that fell from the sky. So I ticked off my water box. Okay. <laughs> I suppose I should have done that as well, eh? Well, you don't care if you win this challenge. Me, it's all pride. Ah, uh, right. So I keep forgetting the winning part. Fish is all cleaned up. I use the stone tools. Sweet. L little shards. You didn't you didn't get to see it, but you have to watch the video. Huh. It's pretty cool. It works really good. Are they like actual stone tools or just like pieces of stone? They're shards from Jay. I explained oh. it all in the video anyway. You, okay. you guys already know. I'll explain to Courtney. Well, she'll watch the video. I will. And read the comments. So be nice in the comments, everybody. <laughs> all right. Well, let me go get the, the not, pr not modern tools I have for making a fire. And we'll see if that'll happen today. It's, it's ultimate moisture today. You'll have all my encouragement, though. You're not by yourself. <laughs> I feel somehow I feel like I am by myself on this. this I wonder part of, why. This part of the thing. <laughs> I think I just ate a mosquito. Mm. So there's food. <laughs> there's food. There's food. Better in than out. That's like a phrase for something else, but like it's true for mosquitoes. Just get rid of those things. Yeah, I just ate it. Yep. Delicious. I don't know. You're definitely ahead of me in calories so far. It's a micro the calories burned as well. Though. Micro calorie. <laughs> Every mosquito eats a micro calorie. Mm. We're delaying. Yep. Oh, nothing's dry, everything's wet. <laughs> Somehow, Chris manages to always, like always, <laughs> pick the best weather for oh, the times when we do these I thought you were said I always get a fire going. Oh, no, no, that too. <laughs> I'll compliment you and say this. So like even way, way back, before the Wood of Beersman was even like a thing, yeah. we would go camping and it'd be so exciting and then, and then the day would come and and it would always be a rainy day. You can't pick you can't pick camping. You can't pick the weather when you go camping. You can't pick survival <gasps> challenges. Nobody knows how bad the weather is. People think it's good right now. They don't know how muggy it is. Yeah. They don't know how much moisture is in the air. They don't know. I mean, apart from the rain, they just don't know that we're sitting in a swamp right now. Right. It's pretty yucky. It's not the ideal conditions that nope. you would expect. Expect for what? Survival exactly. challenge? Survival challenge. Pretty sure people expect the worst <laughs> if you're just trying to survive. And that's what they're getting. The worst. No. The best. Okay, so we got some more not modern tools. Um, Ray, Riverbed Longbows. I didn't bring my longbow today because there's nothing open for hunting. That's why we had to choke tickle. But he did make me this cup. I don't think I'm going to boil water in it, but you know, it's, it's cool. It's really cool. I thought I'd bring it just to show it off. If nothing else, Maybe we can eat the innards of the trout in it or something. Make some blood stew or something like that. So you got a hearth board. You guys know I know about everything about that. Oh, I'm missing something. I meant to bring something else. Anyway, we got the spindle. This is all pre I pre-made these before. We got the bearing block and we got the, the bow. So that's the that's the bow drill kit minus this. I'll be right back. Hold on a second. So this is what I wanted to show off. This is also Ray Riverbend Longbows. Obviously is a piece of antler. It's nice and hard. And so what it is, is it's actually a bearing block, which reduces a ton of friction because it's polished and it's smooth. And when it it's, uh, runs in here, it doesn't produce as much friction. You know it's dry if I can do that. That's, that's my limit, I can't do that one. Maybe you can do this one. Oh, dizzy. Really is a lot of calories that we've been using without getting any. Ah, okay. Trout time. Oh, it's getting darker and darker and darker. I don't think it's because it's the end of the day. It's just like there's gonna be another rain shower coming and that breeze picks up again. Usually means you got about 30 minutes till it starts to rain. It's gonna be a battle, even if we get this fire started to keep it going, let alone to keep to cook a fish. It's gonna be a whole nother thing, but we're gonna give it the good old college try. Right, Courtney? I don't know what that is, but yes. College try. It means like you just give it, you know, a minimal effort and see what happens. College is minimal? <laughs> Are you sure that's a real analogy? It's a real thing. Hmm. Maybe okay. it's more of an American term. Oh, we're gonna get up off the ground a little bit. I'm gonna borrow some of my shelter. We can always put it back after. And I want a nice flat platform that's semi-dry. Not totally dry, but somewhat dry. 
and uh, we can put our base right on there there we go we got all our stuffs here we got a, a groove that might do we might not have to mess around with that too much if we have to start messing around with that with stone tools it's going to be an issue this is actually some kind of nest i think it's a squirrel nest i'm not sure but it's uh pretty cool it's super dry i think it's a squirrel nest i think so that's what it is it's it's cedar cedar shaving so they've done the exact same thing that i would do it's take a tree and they've roughed it all up and then they've mixed a bunch of leaves in there rough the sides up because obviously we've talked about this before with the polishing it's not good if it's polished it actually reduces the amount of friction that you get on the wood you want a surface that's unpolished oh my goodness so much smoke go 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 yeah baby my encouragement help or hinder a little loud in my ear sorry i got it going and then uh my wrist went funky oh, there's some smoke there the noise it's making is telling me it's wrong but there's no way around it. The, the amount of moisture in here is just insane, intense. And so you're not getting that good grind there. I'm just giving it some puffs. It actually is lit right now. Barely. Can you see the smoke? I've been seeing lots of smoke. I choked on the smoke. No, but can you see smoke down there? That tells you when you have smoke down there, yeah. it tells you it's alive. You can see the smoke, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Moisture and fire, especially friction fire, just doesn't go together. There's a tiny bit of smoke. I need that in a second. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, right oh, back oh, up. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa. Whoa. It won't even, it won't even stay. It's That's, crazy. That is crazy. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> okay. Am I still in frame there? Yep. my lungs oh. that's stinky Well, that was not a very easy fire to start. You can tell that that smoke looks bad, like it's not working, but that's the kind of smoke that you see just before it like fully ignites. And a puff of wind, which is happening right now, is pretty much gonna set it off. There's a lot of heat down there in the bottom, but it's drying off. So half of that is like incomplete combustion and then the other half is just moisture coming off of it. Whoa, look at that smoke coming out of there. So now it's crucial to get the fire really going so we got to add a lot more sticks here especially to cook fairly decent sized trout Ooh, look at that smoke that's rescue fire smoke this goes to show you how much combustion it really takes just to get that stuff going these are tough conditions as long as it doesn't downpour which i actually feel a couple sprinkles right now 
So I might have just jinxed myself. So Chris will probably end up editing this out, but these are the things that I think are cool. That whole root structure that our shelter's up against. This is the opposite side of it. So there's one main tree and then two other trees down here. And uh, so all the roots were intertwined. So whichever one, probably the biggest one, fell down for whatever reason. We brought the other two down. And then life goes on. So there's little plants growing in the root structure on both sides, actually. There's like plantain up at the top there. Anyway, I think that's the sort of thing that's really cool in the forest. Let's see what happens. Fish to the bottom. And then what we gotta do is we gotta get it to kind of butterfly out. I'm hoping all these sticks would maybe make a basket. Take them back here and flop them over top. Like so. And we have a little bit of a fish basket. Not perfect, but it should be good enough. Got some greens. Smells like corn. I gotta cook these first though. I'm not eating it out of this swamp water. Hi ho! Off to work we go! Do I look like I seceded? So much food. Seceded. Seceded. I found some adobo in my back pocket. You guys go to shop and pick some up. Because uh, we got like so much of it. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna lose it this way though. Oh, get all the sides on it. There's just no way ready to do this. This fish just wants to move. Oh, oh, oh. That's perfect cooking. Perfect. Whoo, that's hot. Nice. Oh, that's really hot. Whoa, we made a good fire. Thank you. <laughs> Opening these cattails will steam a little bit, but it's a little bit precarious now too because the fish already fell off once. The lip actually detached. It got too hot at the top, detached. So I just made a bit more of a bucket nest there and then uh, just trying to get these over top of the heat. So again, they'll steam. It's not to cook them necessarily. You can eat this stuff raw. It's more just to, you know, purify any of the water it happened to be standing in. Cause you can still catch Giardia from, you know, the water inside the cattail. But if you find them from some fresh enough water that you trust, I'm not advising you to eat them straight out of the water, but you could, and they're delicious raw. Although I think they're going to be pretty woody and chewy at this moment in time. But we'll give them a go, see what happens. Well, I think we're going to have to address the bedding situation in here too. We're going to need to get probably about as much as we did over here the first run. Well, maybe not as much, but you know, you get the idea. we got to get up above the ground if we're going to make it through the night without getting too discomforted. So we'll do, uh, maybe, we'll, I don't know, I feel like maybe... It's Grab a bite of trout first because I'm getting pretty freaking hungry. There's a little bit on the top here that's ready to go. It's not quite cooked yet, but anybody ever got sick of eating raw trout before? Yeah, it's a little chewy. It's not ready yet. <laughs> got these steamed up pretty good, I think. Oh, yeah. Nice and hot down there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah? I'm tired. You had enough? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work, right? Mm-hmm. 
A lot of people say they want to go on these survival challenges, but I don't know. <laughs> because they haven't done one before. <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. There's nothing stopping you guys from going out and trying though. These are like, we do. I do these challenges and they're modeled after something that I think that, that you guys, the viewer, can handle. If you go out and do it, so try to go, no food, no shelter, no water, see if you can't make it all and you can make it as difficult as you want. You don't have to bring, you have to do friction fire if you're not comfortable doing that, but just bring a lighter and Make yourself a fire if you can and find some whatever food you can was in season. It's doable. It's a lot of work. It's a good challenge though. So. Bring someone like him with you. Hey, we got the mother load. Dude, this is gonna be comfier than home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't believe me? I'm gonna need some help, I think. Yeah. Like I'll help. put half of it in the front, half in the back. Okay. And then we'll uh pull it through. We might we almost should have made this first. Well, in hindsight. Yeah. Next time. Next time we build the grass house. Okay. I'm gonna shove it in this way. Well, that didn't look too difficult. Okay. All right. Let's get inside. It's snuggle. <laughs> You're actually in. I'm actually in. You're actually in. Oh, okay, there you go. Might be hard to show for you guys, but uh, no, it's looking pretty good. Get you guys situated in there. This is one like swamp survival. Swamp survival? Yeah. <laughs> How comfy is that? Here I am. It's a little Hi, damp. Hi everybody. It's a little damp, but. Well, you know, it has rain, so. <laughs> Army crawl. Yeah. Hi. Well, this is not bad. I know. Could be worse. Snuggly. I thought it would be damper in here. It's pretty nice. It is pretty nice. Yeah, that's good. It's pretty comfy. It's probably because we're really tired. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. Uh, that's the whole beauty of survival is that you just have- You just, just put have, up with whatever yeah, because you just you're so tired. Garbage experience and then <laughs> it snowballs into like, ah, okay, that's better. It's all about improving your situation. Okay. We've improved our situation a lot. Yep. So if this was like the first day of like a seven day challenge, we'd be in good shape because we just continue to make improvements. Right. We could totally win a loan show. Like look what we've done. We have zero items. Well, like zero mm -hmm. modern items. We have some primitive things, but you could make those. A couple extra days, we'll have a bow drill set and then we'll have a knife kit made out of uh, flint and flint. I don't know the stuff. Where's this flint? Steel? No, it's like flint and steel is the other thing. <laughs> what do you, church? Um, oh. Church is one thing. And then there's a bunch of, I just can't think right now either. Nope. I need no. some trout. Yeah. Anyway, we did good for no tools. This is, this is, this is impressive. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. We're impressive. We're impressed. No, we're <laughs> impressive to others. <laughs> we're impressed of ourselves. <laughs> It'll be up to the thumbs up right now. Hit it. <laughs> Hit that thumbs up if you're impressed <laughs> by your impressiveness. Oh, that feels good. To laugh? No, just to lay down. Oh. <laughs> I feel good about this. I might fall asleep before I can eat trout. Uh, I won't. And yet you're like, I'm yeah. I'm starving. You're like, no, no comment because that means more for you. Well, dude, if you fall asleep before you eat trout, there is not going to be any trout for you when you wake up. Because I could definitely eat that whole trout. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could. Considering I caught it. And did most of the work. It, it did most of the work. Mm -hmm. well, you've done a lot of work. Thank you. That's why I like... For me. It's a partnership, right? Like a man-woman partnership. Uh, Some things you can't do. And there's some things I just don't want to do, so I let you do. <laughs> would you make crafts? No, I don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would like tan a hide. Would I? Well, if you were cold, you would. I would, I would sweep my campsite. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is the city girl. You just got bread out of you. No, I think you're just a farm girl is what you are. I didn't grow up on a farm. No, but you are bred as a farm girl. Uh, why? I wasn't farm worked life. at all when I was a kid. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is like your heritage is not hunter-gatherer heritage. 
you wouldn't, you don't like celebrate the death of an animal or think that's great, the traditions that we came from. Like you're a European and you came from a farm, farming background. Peasants. So has that a lot of, all of we all have too, but we all have it in us to go back to being hunter gatherers. <laughs> it's just a further ancestry for some people. Do you know where I like to gather this one, things this from? This one over here. My own garden. Yeah, see, you're a, that's what, there, there you go. You just proved it. Did you even know you did that? <laughs> you didn't even know you did it. You just did it. It's exactly right. You, you're you a farmer. You Fine. you think it's great to, to tend it, to sit there and play with the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I do like playing with the dirt. Yeah, and I like to, to some degree, too. I used to have a big farm. Not a farm, but a, a garden. garden. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, modern version of a farm. Uh, don't let a woman enter your headspace. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're there, there's no getting out of it. That's right. Uh, how about just a couple minutes? No, like I could legit just go to sleep right now. I'm gonna eat the fish. <laughs> with or without you. Okay, well, I'll have a few bites and then come back into my beddy bed. Okay, so despite what I said earlier, I decided to make us a seat. And these are the cattails. So I'm just taking off one frond, I guess, at a time. And then weaving them, nothing complicated. I didn't even know if it would work, but it's working out just fine. It's getting to the point where it's almost long enough for both of us to sit on. It's pretty special, huh? Who knew you had crafty in <gasps> you? What? After that whole talk. Oh my gosh. I can actually do something. Well, while Courtney weaves, I'm gonna check the fish and that looks, it's not 100% donezo, but I think if we start picking off little pieces of it, it'll, it'll just keep cooking. So I'm happy with that. Here's my level of crafty. I just went back and grabbed another bushel here, but I think this illustrates our earlier conversation perfectly. This is the synergy, because what I did was I got it wide enough for two bums, even though I knew this bum over here was probably gonna continue with her craft. So when she's finished, what we can do is put her craft on top of my crap. And we're gonna have a nice crap craft, bush crap seat to sit on. Nice dry spot out of the swamp. Swamp survival, no modern tools. Zero modern tools. Because the doing a zero tool survival challenge is nuts. But here we are, almost zero tools. Zero modern tools. That's impressive. Look at all the stuff we got done. We got are you calling us impressive again? Yeah, we're impressive. We got a fish, <laughs> we got a half a seat made, we got a shelter, we made a fire. Whew, we're killing it. Hit that thumbs up again. Double thumbs up. I just, if I squat like this and my jeans are tight, then the bugs just bite right through. You gonna hold together? <laughs> Again, I don't know what I'm doing, but. That's pretty impressive. It's not bad. I got it. Well, I will eventually. High five, proud of us. Oh, and look at the fish, it looks so good. Is it comfy and dry? So far. It is, it's squishy, but it's dry. <laughs> I heard the squish too. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is squishy in here. Mm -hmm. Even this, squishy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. You're gonna put it like this and it's gonna be a plate. There oh, we go. that was not good. Did not expect that to go in. We gotta be careful because it's all gonna, it's all gonna fall away. Well, cheers. Help cheers. yourself. Cheers I'm not waiting for you. Eat the done parts and pour back on and cook it. 
I wouldn't okay. eat the middle part. Edge. Hey, down here. See? Oh, okay, yeah, that, that, See? that's yeah. definitely cooked. That's cooked. Thank you. The edges are all cooked, but we can't flip it. So it's going to take, you know, a couple of tries here. We'll eat all the edges. Okay. What are you waiting for? To see if I die? <laughs> no. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very good survival. If I just suddenly crow? Technique, like. So, you're the, you the reason we've gotten this far, and then I just let you eat the food, and if you die, I'm screwed anyway, so. I totally caught this fish by hand. Oh. Totally. That's, the fish is not a paid actor. <laughs> I didn't know what you were getting at. Totally caught it by him. I think in this little bit of time, it's cooked thoroughly. Yeah, well, it was burnt. Look at it. See that? Cattail. <clears throat> so you're going to peel out the outside. It's it's past its best before date. Doesn't doesn't mean it's bad or spoiled. It just means that, you know, it's like any plant. You know, you're a gardener, you know. Mm -hmm. If you wait too long on your salad, what happens to it? It gets My bitter. Screens, yeah. It gets woody, right? It's just not tender. You want the tender shoots. And so a cattail is no different. You just want those tender shoots in there. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're digging. <laughs> no, oh boy. Not much left. So this is going to be more like bubble gum, I think. What, what did you bring home for us to eat that one time? <laughs> Not one a time. very long Not one time. Okay, okay, many times, but like very long time ago, and it was something like this, and you cooked it like three different ways, and it was nasty every single way. Lily root. Oh. Yeah. Don't ever not eat that. This. Well, this is maybe not even. Maybe not even what. That I'll let you try. Nah. On your own. nah. Bitter? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't know if it's fish? the swamp water or what, uh, but. What's the hood for? Uh, bugs? Don't you know? Did you not bring a hood? No. Well, you should have. Alright, did I leave you enough space? Yeah, I'm trying to get the camera dialed better so you can actually see you. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is it crawling now? Oh, oh that's bright. There we go. Hi. Does this count as a Look tool? Look at us. <gasps> Did we break the rule? Oh, no. Did we? Forget about it. I don't have that thing. I didn't really think it would be wise to not have a flashlight in oh. case, like, something case bad happened. Don't scare me. Well, like, if in the middle of the night, if, yeah, um, nothing happens, and we're perfectly safe. We got really soaked because the shelter failed. Because mm. we didn't know what we were building today. But if, like, we had to vacate, like, legitimately, I don't want to be running through the forest trying to find my way out of here in the dark. Uh, okay, so I brought you a flashlight. Um, okay, thanks. And then uh, we got a headlamp, too. Oh, look how cool this looks in yeah. here. It's like, look at that. Dude, it, this is, like... <laughs> Jungle survival now. <laughs> I'll in my eyes. Yeah, here. There we go. Is that better? Yep. Dude, how cool is that? Pretty cool. We that, look kind of green. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Look, it looks like we're in the freaking desert or the jungle. We're in the jungle. So how crude are you doing? You want to just hang out a little bit? Well, I can appreciate your theory. <laughs> However, I did want to go to sleep before we had our fish, which was quite a while ago now. I feel like you're this, just gonna keep me up. I feel like there should be more of a climax to this day, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Mm, yeah, no. Are you warm and dry? Um, uh, yes. Okay. It's like the last time we we did this big, big survival one. We just that was the goal was to make a nice shelter and hang out together. It's like you know we don't have any parental obligations. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> you catching my drift? I am in multiple layers to protect me from the bugs and I don't intend in <laughs> getting any of those off. But if you do, if you are a little spoon and I'm big spoon, 
You want to be you want to be the big spoon? Let's keep this PG, eh? I'm doing my best. <laughs> I just feel like it was a long day and we should unwind. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're not catching my drift? Nope. Fully catching your drift and just moving on. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, we'll keep it PG and we'll leave it to your uh, imaginations let's keep it G. and we won't um, we won't kiss and tell. We won't. Nope. Don't none, kiss, of, none of that. Don't kiss and tell. We won't let anybody know what happened tonight. Keep it between you and me. Right. And the mosquitoes. As it should. And the mosquitoes and whatever animals are lurking in no, the forest. No, there are none. There's coyotes. No. And, don't uh, even say that. Why would you say that? There could be all kinds of different animals out here. Yep, but actually there are none. You seriously want to go to bed? Like, there's a little bit of light left. I know there's a little bit. I think you're just one that you just, you're just scared and you just want to sleep. Because you think that'll make the, the, the adventure end a little faster. Am I right? <laughs> You're not really right about the scared part. I'm not really scared. Like, I've been out in the woods enough to know that the animals generally stay away. This shelter is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Isn't it? I'm not complaining. Like, this bed is comfortable. Yep. It really is. Like, I, 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 I'm impressed. I don't know what you guys can see here. Maybe you can't see very much. You see all the way through the back. And uh, thinking about it now, we should probably have uh, maybe probably have sealed the backs off from the mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with you on that one, guys. And then uh, the roof looks pretty good. You can't actually see through it. So here, maybe you can operate the flashlight a little bit. Show the structure off. Okay. Or you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> or I can do it. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. We've gone over this. We're impressive. We're impressive. <laughs> and impressed by ourselves. I don't know if people can see very much with this. It's just like kind of not, <laughs> not really. Do you want to just take the flash? All right, guys, it's pretty much out. That hurts. Pretty much fully dark now. So um, anyway, it's not super compelling to film things in the dark. So I'm going to say good night and uh, I'll let you know how we survive tomorrow morning. So. Stick around. Courtney, you want to say something? Good night, everybody. Can people see you even? See in the morning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to move, though. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I think I ate a bug again. Well, good morning. I think the sun's coming up. <laughs> that uh, was uh, was an experience. Still sleeping. <laughs> Cordy slept with her gloves on. She at least was smart enough to bring a hoodie because that's deadly, man. My eyes feel all puffy. I swear, I, like I bugs are biting my face all freaking night. Um, thankfully it didn't rain, so there's that. And surprisingly, it's pretty comfy, even if it's a little tight. Uh, not very roomy. You awake? I don't want to get up, though. Yeah, well, I think it's about time we get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we survived. <sighs> Swamp survival. You coming out? I'm curious how many other husbands survive with their wives. <laughs> Anyone uh, else get to do this on a semi-regular basis? Can't even see your face. Uh, it's because I'm well protected against the enemy. <laughs> Not what? you, silly, the mosquitoes. I wasn't figuring you were talking about me. Okay, <laughs> well you gave me a look. Come out, let's go, I wanna go home. Okay, but my bed is like super comfy. It was just like bugs here. Everything else well protected. The bugs are already starting. I don't think they ever stopped, dear. <laughs> well, next time we can plug it up more, like we can actually. I don't even know why we didn't think of that. Uh, next time, he says. We, we like put a front and a back in there. It would have been perfect. Yeah, it's actually. Oh. <laughs> Limber up. I'm not. I'm not too stiff. There you go. Thanks. Halfway. Halfway.
Oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it was good, right? Yep, we're well, still alive. We're still alive. We survived in the grass hut. So uh, if you haven't hit that thumbs up, thumbs it up already. Do it. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be hard for me to convince Courtney to do this again. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like our survival challenges. Are you, hun are you hungry? Well, yeah. <laughs> I just woke up though, so I usually don't eat right away. But I feel like our survival challenges um, have been progressively more difficult. More challenging? Our yeah. survival challenges have been become more challenging. Um, yeah, they have. Thanks for coming along. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate you coming. Oh, thanks. It would have been a lot harder. If to do myself, so there's yes, that. Yes, you remember that. We're a good team. Should we fist bump too? Okay, why? I don't know. How do you end this? Like this? Uh. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Morning kisses. You see you guys. See you later. Bye.